Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good afternoon, or maybe even good evening to those who are watching us online today, live. It feels really good to be here with you today, just minutes, less than an hour before unveiling our latest product. But before we go to that step of the presentation, I would like to present to you a few information about the background of this hydrogen project. As we all know, we live in a very dynamic times. The world around us is changing very quickly and let's say it's only our choice. How do we adapt to those changes? And to be honest, I feel very proud that us as European Union has, cho has chosen to go green with the changes. The most important fact of this, uh, of this thing is the Green Deal. Mm, the goal which was set up by the Green Deal is very challenging because by 2050 we would like to achieve 90% of greenhouse emissions reduced. But one of the key factors to achieve that goal is to use the hydrogen, but not only the hydrogen as a fuel, but also clean hydrogen and to produce one, the availability of the renewable hydrogen. And one of the key fillers to do that is the zero emission buses and public transport. To go deeper into the details of the Green Deal, I would like to discuss of the milestones which are ahead of us. In the first step, in 2025, we will reach 1 million tons of renewable hydrogen. This is the first part and not the only one. On the second step, when we think about that 2025, we also have to increase the decarbonized hydrogen production, which is a very important step. In the second step, by 2030, we'll reach 10 million tons of production of renewable hydrogen. And not only that, but the market share uh, of the hydrogen in the energy mix should be up to 45%. Also, all those milestones are very important to reach the final destination, the reduction to up to 90% of greenhouse emissions. But it's not only about the hydrogen, uh, if we think about the way to achieve this goal, it's also about other possibilities. We should mention here about hydrogen valleys. This is a very good synergy effect. The main parts of the hydrogen valleys is to produce, store and use hydrogen in one place, locally. Shortening the supply chain, as we have seen during last years during pandemic, is very important. So having all those composites, all those main parts together in one place, this is very important and makes the solution even more robust for the future. And Solaris, do believe in this solution. That's why today we are part of two hydrogen valleys. One is the Wielkopolska Hydrogen Valley and Mazovia Hydrogen Valley. But it's not only about the hydrogen, it's also about the infrastructure. Just like the number of the vehicles, the number of refilling stations is growing each year. For today, we have to say we have over 200 refilling hydrogen stations in Europe. When we think about the number of the buses, we can also see the change here. Maybe the number of the buses is not comparable to the zero emission electric buses, the battery buses today on the market, but the growth be uh, between last years from 2019 up to today has changed very significantly, significantly which is six times more. And many of those buses are hydrogen buses produced by Solaris. And that is something which makes us experts in this field. Like it was mentioned today before by my colleague Lukasz, we are the leader of the electric buses today. And I think an obvious goal for us is to be the leader also in the hydrogen field. So up to today, we have already contracted to deliver 170 hydrogen buses to 20 customers in Europe. Already, 
70 of those buses are in operation today in different countries and up to 100 will be delivered soon during this year and next year. Worth mentioning is that uh, there are many customers here in Europe which are using our solutions and we are very proud of each all of them. But from my point of view, I would like to remind few of them which stick to my memory and are very important for me personally. For example, the Bolzano, which is our first customer of 12 meter hydrogen bus and was a very important step for us. Then we had Wuppertal and Cologne, which is here with us today, which gave us plenty of experience in different solutions and situations. And maybe, and last but not least, our internal market leader, let's say today, Konin, who has already had the hydrogen bus and is operating each day. So having that experience and having that knowledge gives us a very clear opinion that none of the customers is the same and every city is different. Between the cities there are different needs. One of them need a wider range. The other one is looking for an infrastructure which is available at this moment, passenger capacity, but also because of geolocal position, different countries, different cities have different needs to climate conditions and topography. Which brings us to the thing which was also said before that very important for us is the feasibility study. Because the feasibility study is a confident choice, a confident decision for us and for the customer to choose the correct solution for each city. And also, like it was mentioned, hydrogen and battery buses are not, are not working against. There are complementary solutions and depending on the needs, we can propose one of them. But it's not only about the hydrogen, it's not only about the buses, it's also about the infrastructure. For today, when we think about the refilling solutions, we, un we unfortunately have to say that there is no standard solution so far. When we have our conversation with different companies, with different customers, we can see that approach of refilling stations is different. Some of them are using different components, some are using different refilling process, having connection, not having connection. This is a very interesting topic and Solaris is really looking forward to develop that in upcoming years. For example, our bus in standard has IRDA communication, which is not a standard in other manufacturers of hydrogen buses, because we do feel that having clear information between the bus and the refilling station is very important and is a key safety factor. That's why in the upcoming future we are taking very close relationship to develop maybe new standards, maybe new type of communication, but the one which will be much safer and much more robust. So speaking about safety, we do have extra components, additional elements on the bus which are very important for this option. So at the beginning, I would like to say that all the components which are working with the hydrogen and bus, uh, hydrogen on the bus, are being monitored by the hydrogen detectors, and all of those hydrogen components are located from the refilling nozzle, which is next to the next to the wheel, on the roof of the bus, which is very important in case of different situations, accidents which happen on the streets of different cities. Also, worth mentioning that except this position of the hydrogen system, we have different monitoring and detecting sensors. For example, we have temperature sensors, we have pressure transducers, but also worth mentioning is that, that the Solaris was the first company to bring to the public with our, with our bus the impact sensors, which is very important in case of any accidents happening next to the cylinders on the top of the bus. Next thing is that each cylinder is equipped with a multifunctional valve and this multifunctional valve is equipped with an overload valve also called excess flow valve. In case of any emergency like 
breaking the hydrogen high pressure pipe, we are 100% sure that any flow out of this broken pipe is being stopped, which is very important. Next are the TPRD valves. The temperature pressure release devices located in, on the cylinders in three different places. They keep the hydrogen inside the cylinder in case of any thermal accidents on correct pressure. So if anything happens, we are sure that the cylinder is not going to devastate the surroundings, but is going to release the hydrogen in a very safety way. And the hydrogen detecting sensors. And having that information, having all this knowledge with our customers, with our previous solutions, we have new goals which we are going to technologically aim for in the nearest future. We have started in 2014 when we have shown to the public our newest on that day uh, Urbino Electric with Hydrogen Range Extender. It was the first time when we have showed this solution to the public, but the work behind that was started a few years before that with our main supplier of the fuel cell. During next years, working with the supplier and showing them what kind of needs do we have, we have received the newer version of the fuel cell, optimized one, which was introduced in 2019 on our new 12-meter hydrogen bus. Since those days, we did make many improvements. We have made the software improvements uh, on the whole, uh, whole components of the bus. We have made new steps to reduce the consumption of the hydrogen, and this reduced con consumption can be seen later on on our latest product, the 18-meter hydrogen bus. For the upcoming years, in the R&D department, we also have many important goals, like reaching the new norm, the R134, which will happen probably in the next one or two years on the market, and then further optimization of products and systems. Well, reaching that point, reaching that goal, that further improvement is not easy. But the experience and expertise which we had before, during last years, give us the opportunity to do that. In 2014, when we have been producing our first hydrogen bus, with the supplier we have received the components and made them work on the bus. During those years, achieving the experience, today we can say that we do it together. Together with our suppliers, we work on introducing, on improving all of the components on the fuel cell, on the hydrogen fuel cell, which gives us the possibility to be one of the leaders on the hydrogen market today. So, having all of that, we can say that the newest bus, which will be presented today, is really enhanced. It's really a new Solaris hydrogen technology because we will see a new fuel cell with improved parameters and efficiency. We'll also see, except the hydrogen system, a new interior unit, which is very, very better than the last solution because we do not have few aspects which used to be with us for last years. And also gives us the higher level of customization we also will see the newest modular drive, which means a more flexibility when we think about the operation, but also about the servicing of those components. And this is not all, because having all those experience, we did add a little bit of flexibility to the drive system, which can give a better performance in different driving conditions. But this is something which will be coming soon, and fortunately, in less than an hour.